So I finally finished Avengers. I'm ready to talk about it. And before we delve into this review, I did buy the game on the PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh, while I would have loved to play it on PC with the improved performance, the PS4 version is the only one that will be complete with the Spider-Man DLC and other exclusive content that is only coming to PS4. And so that's why I picked this version. Now, if you watch my beta impressions, you'll know that I wasn't particularly enthralled by what I saw there. Not to say that it didn't have some mindless fun moments, but I did feel like too many of the design and technical flaws were too prominent and there were a lot of uninspired and monotonous elements that got in the way and I was hoping that playing through the full campaign would make me do a full 180 on Marvel's Avengers and while the final game left a better impression than the beta did unfortunately a lot of the issues I had with the beta still persist in the final game and to me the sad part about all of this is that I can feel and sense the potential that this game has before the looter RPG live service elements drag everything down. There is like a solid core foundation, especially with combat and the different characters and the variety of moves that are at your disposal. But the genericness of live service sort of drags everything down. And not to say that it's an atrocious game, it's just disappointing in that it's so much less than what it could have been. Uh, it is an all right game, ultimately average, unextraordinary in my eyes. And I generally feel like without the Avengers coat of paint, this isn't a game I would have really given a second look because there are so many better games of this type out there. That's not to say I haven't seen others who have been having a good time with this game. If you're among that crowd, get on ya. I'm kind of jealous of you. But for my part, I just expected much more out of a AAA Avengers title. But before we delve into my issues with the title, let's talk about what I actually did like about the game after finishing the campaign. I'll reiterate that the heroes feeling unique from one another, the powers being well realized, and each hero really having their own style, being good at different things, being able to take on different roles, all of that are huge pluses. And the final game actually allowed me to play as Thor and Captain America more extensively, who were locked in the beta. And they were welcome additions, and I generally enjoyed experimenting with all of the different characters and all of their different play styles. And I actually found that combat allowed for moves to be chained in interesting ways and can actually flow pretty well. There's actually some fun to be had with combat. When the game lets you, and I'll let you know what I mean by that uh, in a bit, and narratively, I did find some good and more grounded cutscenes in the campaign that actually genuinely evoked wholesome emotions, uh, and there were some good chemistry between certain characters. Kamala Khan ended up being a pleasant surprise. She's sort of the glue and the heart of the story, and when they bring her back down to Earth and keep her grounded, uh, her performance is really compelling. I think the beta just only showed off her fangirl side, and so it gave me the impression that that's all she was gonna be. Maybe he's hiding somewhere in this super cool pile of Avenger stuff. But there is more to her than meets the eye, though there are moments in the game where it feels like they lean too much into the fangirl side during sort of serious moments or right after a serious moment and it breaks the tension of those moments, so I wish they could have dialed that down a little bit. I mean, I just flew on a Quinjet to a secret shield base. Uh, we saw Nick Fury, and, and now I'm talking to Jarvis and not keeping my cool at all. <laughs> and I wish they could have dispensed with some of the more cartoony dialogue. Widow, did you see that? Sure did. I was like, bam! You're history, buddy! Come on. I know I don't focus. Hey, I saw, and I thought you were awesome. Thanks! Yeah, you were kind of awesome. But again, when these characters are brought down to Earth and when they're, they actually have nuanced and serious dialogue, there are some good moments in the campaign scattered throughout. And overall, the campaign, I would say, was decent. I'll say it's certainly better than the impression the beta gave, 
but I wouldn't call it a mind-blowing experience. But at the same time, you will find those Marvel moments, you know? You'll find those references and Easter eggs. It's a very superhero story that fulfills its purpose, and I think Marvel fans will find plenty of nostalgia here and plenty of things to get a kick out of. So that's good. Uh, the campaign did offer a, a few cool set pieces here and there as well. But I'll say again that at the same time, the campaign is really nothing exceptional. The story overall felt very standard affair, even with the good moments scattered around. Nothing about this stands out, makes me think this is one of those things I'll remember forever. It's nothing quite on the level of, say, Spider-Man PS4, which had a really deep emotional impact by the end of it all with the way the characters were built up and established, especially that relationship with Octavius. It was just brilliant. There's nothing quite on that level of emotional resonance in this game, from what I've personally found. I also felt like the campaign could have explored the Avengers members' history, their dynamic, and their internal struggles more than uh, what happened in the campaign. The character exploration and development overall felt very surface level. Just when you think they're going to delve deeper, they pull back out and go surface level again. And there's just too many instances where serious situations or pivotal moments are disrupted by sort of puns and smart-ass comments and a sort of goofy dialogue that is better suited, I think, for an animated series. The campaign does have an all-star cast who I feel are, are ultimately underutilized. And there are a few moments where they shine, but I feel like most of the dialogue they spout is, you know, either techno babble and nonsense science that you find in the superhero stories. Them talking about, oh, we gotta infiltrate the mainframe and destroy the conductor so that the extrapolator can be launched into, sp I don't know, I'm making some shit up, but it's basically what you listen to more often than not. Dialogue that's kind of exhausting and kind of comes in one ear and out the other or excessive puns and jokes and smart-ass lines, one-liners, just generally corny banter, you name it. All aboard. <sighs> really, Tony? And I also feel like Tony Stark was underwhelming in the way he was represented in this game. Uh, he feels more like Deadpool than Iron Man. It feels like he slips in and out between Tony Stark and Deadpool. Well, Percy and I are seeing something about our issues. Great. Short. Reggie, really good at guessing past. All this for me. Oh, you shouldn't have. Don't flatter yourself. I'm barely left to the finger. So the kid's right? You're mind melding with robots now? And there are certain grounded moments with Tony Stark where Tony Stark actually does come through. Whoa. <gasps> hey. Sorry. You should have knocked. I was trying. I was knocking fist. Jarvis, help me out here. It appears the locking mechanisms on some of the Chimera's crew quarters have not been enabled. There you have it. I will fix that. All right, I'm just gonna change. Wait, 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 wait. The outfit is, is all about attitude. You gotta wear it like you mean it. Show me what you got. Come on, you can do better than that. Yeah, now we're talking? But more often than not, the kinds of quips, comments, and jokes, and the kind of delivery presented for Tony Stark just feels more like Deadpool. The campaign overall is pretty short, roughly 12 hours it took for me to beat. Narratively, uh, it felt very rushed, uh, which didn't allow for key character and plot developments to have enough breathing room. I felt like there was some padding here and there with MacGuffins that made missions narratively uninteresting. Oftentimes, you know, the mission objectives would become the story, and so that's very monotonous. That got old fast. Uh, stakes never feel super high, in my opinion, especially with uh, characters, again, constantly cracking jokes during serious moments. And the game just sort of ends before you know it. It feels like there's more to tell, but like they held some stuff back because this is a live service game where they're going to keep updating the story, but that leaves the base game feeling a bit empty in its campaign, a bit like there's something there that's incomplete. And the whole plot of this game revolves around essentially the Avengers hitting rock bottom. They kind of split apart after uh, they're blamed for this catastrophic event, and Kamala Khan is kind of the glue that brings them together. 
And with Avengers hitting rock bottom from the outset, it almost feels like the game starts at Act 2. You know what I mean? We don't get to spend enough time with the Avengers before shit goes down. Avengers eventually do reassemble, and Kamala Khan, again, acts as that soul and that sympathetic uh, key element that all the Avengers rally around. But right around the time the Avengers assemble is when the game ends. There's like one more act, maybe, where you finally you know, fight the final boss, but it feels like the Avengers being assembled isn't given room to breathe. After beating the final boss, there's not much in the way of resolution. Uh, there's some with Kamala Khan, but I feel like the story kind of races to the finish line, and the ending I felt was overall unsatisfying. Uh, the baggage and relationship between different Avengers uh, isn't explored as in-depth as I would have liked. Like, I found the conflict between Bruce Banner and Tony Stark really compelling, but often it had sort of peaks and valleys, but no smooth and believable and compelling transitions. Either they were really just going at each other, or they were buddy buddies. It didn't feel like there was that awkward period in between. It feels like the game's called Avengers, but Kamala Khan is definitely the protagonist, and the Avengers are the supporting cast, with Bruce Banner being the more prominent of the supporting cast of Avengers. He is kind of who Kamala Khan leans on a lot of the times, and Kamala Khan is by far the most fleshed out character and the focus of the story. Uh, Tony Stark feels like a secondary supporting character who has some good interactions with Kamala Khan and Bruce as well, but not enough. Uh, shares this one particular moment with Captain America that I thought was nice. And then the rest, Black Widow, Thor, and Captain America overall feel like they're pushed aside, barely get any time to shine really, or get any sort of emotionally resonant character moments. Overall, I'd say the campaign I'm going to make an Anthem comparison, and I'm going to say Marvel's Avengers campaign is definitely better than Anthem's, but that feeling of incompleteness, like this is act one of a live service, like that feeling is there for sure, and so I feel like the full ambition of the game's campaign wasn't realized at launch, which uh, diminishes my... Uh, ability to fully recommend this title right now. Now, beyond the campaign's narrative, there's the gameplay and mission variety I was hoping would really get bolstered by the campaign, that the campaign would introduce more creative mission types and objectives, but really if you've played the beta, you've pretty much played the entire game because it's the same activities copied and pasted and repeated over and over again. It's basically defeat waves of enemies, control points while defeating waves of enemies, or destroy certain objects while defeating waves of enemies. Those are pretty much the three major archetypes, and there's some variations here and there, and occasionally those are strung together in different ordering length, separated by the occasional elevator ride. The campaign does offer, again, cutscenes and story beats and certain villains um, that break up the monotony a bit, but the overall gameplay loop, the level design, the encounter designs, the objectives, exactly the same every single time pretty much just too little variety it just gets painfully tedious it, it's mind-numbing this game there are different locales that the campaign takes you across but all of the locales look kind of bland ultimately interiors all pretty much look the same especially the aim facilities the game isn't open world uh, you have to select missions via a menu which take you to instant small sandboxes or linear areas that aren't all that compelling to explore I don't mind games not being open world but if you're gonna design sort of smaller levels make those levels really stand out none of the levels in this game stand out in any way shape or form there is the occasional obstacle core style world navigation that's very linear and not all that engaging and some some of these scenarios don't make much sense, like Kamala Khan falling to her death when she has stretchy limbs to be able to hold on to anything. It just feels like there are a lot of these artificial roadblocks and obstacles that shouldn't pose an issue to these superheroes whose powers allow them to easily overcome, say, a cliff that for some reason Kamala Khan can't jump over in this one specific scenario. So stuff like that kind of took me out a bit. There are occasional environmental puzzles that are incredibly basic, just basically press some switches, shoot some targets, and then open doors that way. There are occasional sort of these linear set-piece chase sequences or escape sequences that are okay, but ultimately don't offer anything incredible. The game just fails to keep the gameplay loop fresh. Like, every game is on some level repetitive when you think about it, but... There are ways to keep that gameplay loop fresh through compelling progression, 
through interesting twists to level design, you name it, but this game fails to do that. The lack of enemy variety didn't help matters. All the enemies being so uninspired in their design, mostly just robots, basically, of different varieties. I was hoping that the full campaign would feature a wider array of enemies than what I saw in the beta. I was hoping that the beta was only showing a small array of enemies, but nope. You're fighting pretty much the same goons over and over and over again, on top of completing the same types of mission and objectives that are all kind of bland. And boss battles, unfortunately, also I found to be lackluster. There are pretty much only three boss battles that are super villains. So there is Taskmaster, who is the tutorial boss at the beginning. There's Abomination, who is an early game boss battle. And then from there to the final super villain boss, it's just giant robots and mechs of different varieties, not particularly inspiring in their visual design or gameplay design. You just kind of had a pummel at different things at different points. And that was it. Uh, the final boss was, I, I think, the more intriguing and more dynamic boss. It had multiple stages, but other games have done much better final bosses. The main villain of this uh, Avenger story is, and I don't think this is really a spoiler, MODOK. Um, very sort of typical supervillain. The game does its best to justify his motivations, but those motivations aren't explored as in-depth as I would have liked. Again, it's all very surface level, and so it was hard for me to connect with the villain, whereas in Spider-Man PS4, they really build up Octavius, and so when you're fighting him, you are emotionally conflicted in many regards. The villain becomes incredibly memorable. That's not present in this game, unfortunately, in this particular narrative story. The most solid aspect of the game, the thing that really gives it a lot of potential, I think, is the combat and the variety of characters characters. Um, the fact that there's actually more depth to the combat than is let on on the surface level. But I feel like the systems and the game design surrounding this solid combat mechanic don't let the combat shine as much as it could. I think combat is at its best when you're essentially beating up weaker enemies, launching them in the air, juggling them and comboing them in creative ways by chaining heroes' abilities and moves. And I wish the game had focused on that aspect, on the creative usage of skills. And you can actually find some cool videos online showing the depth of combat that can be achieved in ideal situations. But more often than not, I feel like the combat encounters are too chaotic to really allow you to combo and juggle in a way that feels intuitive for the average player. Super high skilled players no doubt can achieve incredible things, but for the average player, it feels like that kind of high-level combat is a little more out of reach than it needs to be. And then when the larger enemies come in, that's when combat is dragged down because these larger enemy types cannot be juggled, they cannot be launched in the air, they cannot be really combo to the extent that some of the smaller enemies can be. And that's when you get to these bullet spongy enemies with giant health bars. They spawn more often than you might think and they sort of break up the combat flow. They're essentially unmovable rocks that you have to pummel until they die. So you just whack them with basic attacks or unleash a series of special abilities rather than, ooh, how can I take this large enemy, break its defenses, and then juggle it in the air and like find creative ways to keep it staggered. And with these larger enemies, you don't really feel like a superhero. You don't feel super powerful against them. They're not fun to fight against. Like, it's weird to see a giant heavy truck like Hulk hit these enemies like this bulldozer and these larger enemy types don't really react in any way. They don't get pushed back or launch in the air, and that just wasn't very satisfying to me. Just in general, if combat was more akin to Arkham series, Spider-Man PS4, with elements of like Devil May Cry, because it does feel like they inserted elements of all of these in there, so if they would have focused on that stuff, on the skill-based stuff instead of on the stats stuff, combat would have, I think, really been taken to a, a whole other level. Combat is also dragged down by frustrating design choices that break the flow. So there are certain enemy moves that will straight up just lock you down until you mash square and free yourself. There are other attacks that will stagger and interrupt you constantly. And these staggers can last a solid second that can feel like an eternity. And it makes it very easy for you to get stun locked by multiple attacks. And when that happens, everything just kind of, it feels like everything just stops. You just have to kind of stay there until the animations play out and the player character uh, recovers. And then it doesn't help that indicators for incoming attacks are hard to see more often than not. The screen's always way too busy for its own good. There's always too much going on 
both in terms of like particle effects or just a bunch of HUD elements that invade your vision. And so indicators are very easy to miss. Sometimes indicators don't appear at all when projectiles are shot from a great distance. Uh, so you often get stunned by these attacks that come out of the blue that kind of gave you no real chance to dodge them. And then for heavy attacks that require to hold down the triangle button, uh, if you're playing on PS4, those take a bit too long to finally trigger. It leaves you way too vulnerable. I wish these attacks were a bit more swift. So it just feels like there are moments in the game that pause everything too much. And I feel like those moments could be reduced or truncated in such a way that you're always in flow rather than the game constantly stopping you from engaging with the most a solid and fun part of the game. And generally, combat encounters don't feel well thought out or designed. It just feels like they just throw a bunch of stuff at you kind of thoughtlessly. And then there's the technical issues that really drag down combat. Uh, so frame rate is a big one. And I was hoping that the frame rate would improve dramatically from the beta, but it's still, it's just as bad, really. It, it hasn't, I haven't felt a significant improvement. And there are times when frame rate is so unstable, just so chugging along that it felt unplayable at times, downright disorienting and physically nauseating, especially with all the camera shake and jank. I, it felt like I kept getting motion sickness. I kid you not when I say this, the credits were chugging. The freaking credits had frame rate issues, which I cannot comprehend. And there are times when the camera just didn't seem to be able to keep up with the action. Camera could be janky here and there. And uh, camera sensitivity, even at max settings, it felt too slow to turn around. Just general jankiness with auto-targeting could happen here and there that disrupted combat. Moving around the environment can be cumbersome at times with uh, the way characters latch on to certain environmental areas. So they've got a solid foundation, but so many things get in the way of combat really maximizing its potential. And then there's loot, which is probably the worst aspect of this game in my experience. Uh, this is a looter game, which has some of the worst feeling loot progression I have ever played. So loot never really feels like there's any weight to it. You just go through the motion of completing a mission, opening chests, whatever it is, earning some new gear. You go to the gear menu, hold down a button to auto-equip, then you go through the motion of dismantling stuff and then boosting whatever you have, boosting some gear, and then that's it. And I felt like I never really had to think too much about considering my build, really. It just felt like I was just boosting this arbitrary power level number just because the game shoehorned in live service looter RPG elements that ultimately drag down the entire experience that ultimately don't belong, I feel, in this specific title. The whole idea of heroes looting also took me out of the game because these are superheroes whose powers are inherent. Uh, while I understand the idea of unlocking new skills as the game progresses because heroes learn new tactics and maneuvers, the power level aspect of the hero just, like, it makes no conceptual sense. It feels misplaced in this title, just from an immersion factor. And then on top of that, you've got stuff like factions and faction challenges and ranks that unlock items with specific vendors taken straight out of looters like Destiny. There are battle passes, dailies and weeklies to grind out. It really makes the game feel like it's this job basically that you have to come back to every day for certain hours it makes the whole experience grindy and tedious and really the post game is all about grinding out these cosmetics or grinding out the best gear exotic gear that unlocks way down the line that you can find eventually after you've gone through the same cycle and motions and redundant uh, gameplay over and over and over again until you've exhausted yourself. Uh, underwhelming loot also contributes to the post game not being particularly fun, not something that I personally wanted to engage in for the long term. And then to make matters worse, the multiplayer aspect of this multiplayer looter game wasn't working in my playthrough of this game. The matchmaking was straight up just not functional. Even after waiting, you know, 10, 20 minutes, I would get nothing. And this is baffling and unacceptable for a multiplayer looter game that has launched. This is not how a finished product should be. This game easily could have used, you know, six more months in the oven with all the technical issues that it has that I'll get to in a bit. Uh, but before that, let's talk about graphics, which were not all that impressive. 
some of the cutscenes could look pretty good. Some of the character models and like loading screens look pretty good. But when you're actually in game, I find that textures often look blurry. Environmental artistry felt generic. Vistas aren't all that pretty. Everything just feels cookie cutter, very sort of basic in their design. Character models aren't all that stellar or impressive in game, especially Tony Stark, who looks like some random NPC. Every main character in a game should stand out from the rest of the NPCs. Tony Stark looks like an NPC I'd find in the streets of Ubisoft's Watch Dogs or something. And then with presentation, uh, a lot of problems got in the way and took me out. Lip sync issues persistent in the final game. I found those in the beta. Never heard of it. He really does not want to be found. Indeed not. Some of those just have not been fixed in the final product. There are a lot of glitchy transitions from gameplay to cutscene, or from cutscene to gameplay, or even from gameplay to gameplay. And throughout gameplay, I did find a decent amount of janky animations, characters getting stuck in places, uh, pop-ins for textures and animations alike were prominent enough that I feel the need to point those out. Music also feels generic, surface level. None of the tracks were all that memorable. Certain soundscapes and certain environments felt just so dead, almost like stock audio. And things got worse with certain audio issues, like there were a couple times when I encountered audio just flat out getting stuck in a loop. We did a little digging in the data. That forced me to either skip cutscenes or wait until that all played out and fixed itself. In general, the game's just technically unpolished and in an unacceptable state at this juncture when it has launched. The final product should have been delayed. There are just so many things they have to fix from the frame rate issues that are really bad on PlayStation 4. There's AI issues, uh, AI is hit or miss. There are times when, you know, I was downed and nobody came to my rescue. And when I'm capturing points, the AI isn't involved in that. They're just focused on basically the closest enemy instead of working with me to capture points. And that was frustrating with me having to do all the work. Matchmaking again, just not working in a multiplayer looter shooter game at launch is plain and simply completely unacceptable. Long loading times were painful in a game that already feels tedious in its design. Long loading times were prominent between missions, between deaths, even switching between characters in the menus led to long loading times. And I'm hearing reports of people who are buying microtransactions to either purchase cosmetic items or skip battle passes. They are experiencing an issue where items that players have earned or bought straight up just get locked out. And uh, developers are aware of this. They have expressed that they're looking into this and have suggested a number of solutions that have worked for some, but not for others. But like this stuff just should not be happening. And there are already plenty of complaints about the price points of marketplace items with skins costing upwards of, you know, like $15 with basic emotes costing a couple bucks. Prices are simply way too high uh, for cosmetics in a $60 full price game. And that's really the main thing here is that Marvel's Avengers, you can sense the potential this game had, and you can sense how that potential is just pushed down all the way to the ground. The game feels like it's crippled by the grind that live services tend to introduce, or the rewards that live services tend to paywall or lock behind grind. It feels like the looter RPG elements that are designed to keep players engaged for not just days, but months and years. That stuff essentially takes an experience and drags it out and stretches it thin so that it's shallow and that is reflected in the monotonous level design, the monotonous enemy design, the monotonous gameplay loop, the monotonous rewards loop, the tediousness and mind numbingness of it all. I plain and simply cannot recommend you buy this game, at least not now, you know, maybe 12 months down the line we'll see a dramatic improvement with more characters added, more mission varieties, with more uh, rewarding loot. But for my part, a game only has one chance to give a good first impression. If it doesn't do that, I'm just going to move on to other more compelling titles. My time is limited, and right now I've got too many other games to play, too many other games that I'm looking forward to that, 
you know, just do RPG elements better, that do combat better, that do uh, level design better, that do everything else better. Uh, this is, at best, wait for a sale for those who might enjoy this type of experience uh, until the bugs are fixed, until the gameplay becomes more compelling until the narrative is, it feels more complete, you know, until the campaign is more fleshed out. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, this is not that mind-blowing Avengers game that I've been waiting for. It's one of those, eh, games. So overall for me, Marvel's Avengers was a disappointing experience. It could have been so much more. And that's the most painful thing. There is a diamond in the rough there that stays buried by the rough. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on Marvel's Avengers. Again, I respect those who enjoyed and didn't enjoy the game to each their own. Uh, this has been my experience, though, and maybe this will accurately reflect what others might experience for those who are on the fence. But look at other reviews of people who might have enjoyed the game and, you know, come to your own conclusion. This is my take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Marvel's Avengers. If you have checked out the title or if you're on the fence, let me know, you know, what you think of the game based on what different people have said, myself included. So drop a comment and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.